You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela, episode number 115. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food, and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the podcast this week. I can't believe that we are on podcast number 115. Can you believe that, Marshall? Right. (laughs) Time is just going so fast. You know, like it's been over two years now. I know. It's great. (laughs) It's it's amazing. Yeah. So how are you doing? (laughs) I'm doing I'm doing really, really good. Um, We've had kind of a wild day today. (laughs) Yeah, we have. (laughs) Technology is uh, sometimes challenging for me on my end. At well, it's, it turns out it's challenging <laughs> on my end today too. So, <laughs> oh well, we'll somehow figure it we, out. Yeah, somehow we always make it work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if if the sound is a little bit off, it's not your. Those of you who are listening, it's not your problem; it's ours. So <laughs> that's why yeah, we're, we're doing our best. <laughs> we're doing our best. Yes. All right. Well, today I wanted to talk about a thought that oftentimes gets in people's way when they're on their weight loss journey. And that thought is, I should be able to do this on my own. So what do you think about that thought, Marcel? That is a really good one. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts that get in my way in my weight loss journey, but but this this is a really important one. It is, yeah. We could just do one podcast after another about thoughts that get in your way on your weight loss journey. (laughs) Yeah, we we could. (laughs) No, but I've heard this thought from patients on numerous occasions. I have thought this myself on numerous occasions that I should be able to do this on my own. Like, I know. I hear a lot of people say that when when they come in when they first come Mm -hmm. into the clinic, they think yeah that they could do it on their own, and um, and I've thought that too. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, you do. You think you know I should know how to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, remember what I always say about weight loss: that the weight loss journey done well is a journey of profound personal evolution, and the weight loss journey done not quite so well is just another diet. So. It's good stuff. One of the things that's really important in any weight loss journey is to examine your thoughts. Lasting weight loss requires that we get into our minds because everything starts with our thinking. And I'm going to say that again because that is really important. And if you can take notes, take notes on this. One of the things that's important in any weight loss journey is to examine your thoughts. Lasting weight loss requires that we get into our minds. In other words, we get into our heads and figure out what we're thinking because everything starts with our thinking. Now, it's really interesting because I always knew this on some level, but it wasn't until I actually got certified as a life coach a couple of years ago that I really started to understand how important our thoughts are on this journey And I really got it. So our success on this journey is completely dependent on us figuring out what we're thinking and making decisions about whether these thoughts serve us or not. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is good. Yes, it does. (laughs) (laughs) Now, here's the deal. All thoughts are optional. So I'm always working hard to help our students and patients get a good handle on discovering and assessing their underlying thought processes so that they can make informed decisions, conscious decisions about whether they want to continue thinking these thoughts or not. So this thought, I should be able to do this on my own. Helpful or not helpful? What do you think? Well, from personal experience, I would say it's not helpful. Not helpful. How do you know that it's not helpful? Well, You ask yourself, how does this thought make you feel? So when you think that thought, I should be able to do this on my own, how does it make you feel? Um, Defeated. Defeated, yeah. For me, this thought smacks of self-judgment. So remember that the sentence starts with should. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Should. Exactly. Should thoughts can be really detrimental. So we talked about the thought, I should be further along than this by now. Do you remember that podcast? I think that was 
That was right around the time of my yeah. 60th birthday, which yeah, is I do over remember a year that. ago now. That's podcast number 60 on my 60th birthday. So that thought is super discouraging. I should be further along than this. This thought that I should be able to do this on my own feels equally discouraging to me. It's just, it's just a tough thought. And if you think about it, there's actually a thought behind that thought. And so the thought behind that thought is something along the lines of, there must be something wrong with me. Would you agree with that, Marcel? Yeah, for, for sure. Yes. Something along those lines. There's, there must be something wrong. I should be able to do this on my own. Something must be going wrong. And what emotion is that going to create? Discouragement, which doesn't feel good. And then what are you likely to do? Give up, go eat to help yourself feel better. Okay. So when you explained the, um, the emotional ladder to me a long oh, time ago. the emotional ago. scale, yeah. Yeah, the emotional scale. Yeah. Um, I, I always look at it like I'm climbing a ladder. That's how I was a picture it in my head is why I say that. Well, that's because um, the diagram that I have is of somebody climbing up of it. Up yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it always reminds me of like when you, when you explained it to me and I explain it to some of our patients that mm-hmm. when, you know, when you get stuck in those thoughts that your brain is going to be sad or it's going to feel defeated and automatically it's going to want to feel better. And so Mm -hmm. what's it going to do? It's going to want a dopamine hit, right? So then automatically you're going to want a donut or you're going to want, you know, a candy bar. You're going to want, you know, that pint of ice cream. And then it's just going to be that perpetual, you know, I feel like shit because there's something wrong with me. So then I want to go Mm -hmm. eat something sweet or I want to go eat some bag of chips. So I always try to talk to the patients, you know, or, or just anybody, even myself, you know, just to to stay out of, you know, to stay out of those, that negativity. And so when you were talking about that, I was just, I was just thinking about like how, just what a vicious cycle that is of, of, you know, thinking like that and, and how, you know, how much it can bring us down. So I'm I'm so glad we're talking about this today. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and then, (laughs) The next thing you want to do, once you recognize, okay, like this thought is creating distress and it's causing me to want to buffer with food or alcohol or whatever it might be, the next thing you want to do is you want to ask yourself, well, is this thought even true? Like, should I be able to do this on my own? Yeah, yeah, Why should I be able to do this on my own? Like, who says I should be able to do this on my own? And I want each of us to think about this very purposefully, just for a moment, okay? Just think about this. We have a very powerful food industry that has done exquisite research to figure out exactly what to do to make our food trigger incredible amounts of dopamine in our brains. Never in human history has something that is eaten brought so much pleasure to the brain. Never. From the first moment that the brain experiences this kind of intense pleasure from food, the brain learns very quickly, I want more of that. Have you ever seen, I I get these videos across my Facebook all the time. Have you ever seen videos across social media feeds of babies tasting cake or ice cream for the first time? Oh yeah, yeah, I see them quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, I see them all the time. And I just like, I always get this horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach when I see these videos because I know, and all of you podcast listeners should know by now too, uh uh-oh, this child's brain has now had its first experience with sugar. And now the brain has been sensitized to expect a huge dopamine hit from these substances. And this child will be struggling for the rest of its life. And the food industry is going to be right there advertising constantly, trying their best to trigger that wanting in people's brains all the time. Constant stimulation and constant triggers to eat. And then our social structure has built into it that it's totally socially acceptable to eat at all times of the day and night, to snack all day long, and to give these foods as gifts, all of that that's going on. And yet somehow we think that we should be able to do this on our own. Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm kind of feeling a little bit emotional because I'm thinking like if I would have known this or my parents would have known this or their parents would have known this information, yeah. like yeah. how how different my life would have been. Yeah. You know, it's kind know. of um it's kind of sad to think like yeah. how different my life could have been if I would have known this information and been able to 
be more conscious about um, buffering yeah. because yeah. I've done that so much in my lifetime and, yeah. um, you know, s- just suppressed so many of my emotions and uh, yeah. just, yeah, it's just overwhelming to kind of think about that, that, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, <sighs> you know, regret's not going to help us. No, it's just, it's just knowledge. a thought, you know, it's just, it's just, yeah, that thought. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, but, but what we can do from this point on is to make sure for any children in your life that they're not subjected to this early addiction, you know? Yeah, this is important information. Yes. If you have any babies in your life, don't go giving them sugar. <laughs> don't yeah. do that to them. Like, no, let them decide. Think about it in the same way you think about alcohol and cigarettes. Like later, later they can try it when their brain's not so susceptible, right? Yeah, yep. So my point in, in saying all of this is that our brains have learned from very early ages to use the dopamine hit that we get from food for entertainment, for connection, for relief of painful emotions like boredom or resentment or anger or guilt or grief or anxiety any number of negative emotions, we have learned from very early ages that this will help and this will soothe. And it's in front of us constantly. We're constantly being triggered to eat by advertisements everywhere you turn. And somehow we think we should be able to do this on our own. Sounds pretty ridiculous. (laughs) Frankly, I think that's a ridiculous thought. Like, no, we shouldn't be able to do this on our own. And there's no reason why we should have to do this on our own, right? Makes sense? Yeah, we, we can't do this on our own. We need other other people and we need help to do this. I know yeah. that. Yeah. Then there's another problem with this thought. I should be able to do this on my own. So people will say to me all the time, I know what to do. I just can't make myself do it. So what's going on there? Well, the truth is, that you can have an intellectual understanding of certain principles. For example, you can have an intellectual understanding that processed food is an addictive drug and that your health will be better if you avoid it and eat whole natural foods, right? But an intellectual understanding is never enough. And why is that? Well, because learning how to manage the urges to eat when you're constantly confronted with all of this temptation everywhere around you Learning how to manage emotional upset without turning to food. Learning how to plan and cook healthy foods. These are not intellectual exercises. These are skills that need to be developed, like skills. And learning new skills is not an easy thing. So learning new skills takes a lot of practice. Anytime you learn something new, you're going to fail a lot before the brain develops a strong, firm, neural pathway that is flawless, right? So failure at all of this is completely normal and to be expected. And yet we've been seduced by the diet and fitness industry to think that all of this should be easy, that we should be able to do all of this on our own without help and without support. It just doesn't work all that well. (laughs) It's oh like, yeah, I mean, and it's and they make you think it should be quick and fast and yeah and yeah and and it's just it's just none of this is true. None of this is true. So think about what happens anytime you're learning a new skill. So um, remember what it was like learning how to drive, or I mean, for Marcel, I mean, your your youngest son just learned how to drive a couple of years ago. So right. we kind of went through that process with him. It's been a while for yeah. me. My kids are, yeah. are older, but. You know, you have to have the intellectual understanding first. You, you sit in a classroom and you learn the rules of the road and the parts of the car and how cars work, but you'd never expect someone to be able to drive a car without getting out there and actually practicing driving. So the intellectual understanding and the actual driving of the car are two completely different things. And you need to practice in a safe environment and you need to have an instructor and you need to get coaching, right? So that's how you learn how to drive a car. Right. And so I want each one of us to be thinking the exact same way about our weight loss skills. You have the intellectual understanding. Processed food stimulates dopamine, and that's what causes me to desire it. Processed food works really well to help enhance positive emotions and dampen negative emotion. And it's socially acceptable crutch. And it also creates terrible disease, and it'll eventually kill me. 
So you have all of this intellectual understanding, but how do you actually do it, right? How do you actually learn the skills that it takes to manage your emotional life without processed food? And how do you learn how to choose which thoughts will help you the most and which thoughts will not? So these are the skills that need to be developed and practice in a safe container. And that's exactly what we do in Empowered Weight Loss. That's the membership that I have online. You can be anywhere in the world and you can be a member of Empowered Weight Loss. We're working through these skills and we're practicing them and you're getting group coaching sessions and you've got the option of individual coaching as well. It's a powerful place to learn and practice all of these new skills. Like we start with the basics. I teach you the skills and we practice the skills together in group coaching sessions. And you get experience in a safe, loving, non-judgmental environment. It's a pretty powerful and unique program and it's very robust. So if you want help, come join us. Don't try to do this on your own. (laughs) Don't even think about trying to do this on your own. It's too hard. So we're going to start a new six-month session in July. So that'll be a really excellent time to get started. But if you're anxious and you want to get started now, you can join us now. Just go to journeybeyondweightloss.com forward slash yes, and we'll see you on the inside. Does that sound good? Yes. I just think that if anybody's listening to this, do yourself a favor and sign up and uh, <laughs> yeah. change your life, yeah. get going. Yeah. I mean, I do, I do think it's just really important to understand. Don't expect to be able to do this on your own. That right. thought, I should be able to do this on my own, is very detrimental and very not helpful and not even true. You shouldn't be able to do this on your own. We all need Hardly support. anybody can. We all yeah, need support. We all need support. Yeah. So get the support that you need. There are actually um, studies. Um, I have looked them up in the past. I don't have them on the tip of my tongue right now. But there are studies that show just how important getting coaching and support is in your weight loss journey. And the success rates of people who get coaching and support versus the success rates of people who don't are pretty astounding. (laughs) Pretty remarkable how much better you do if you've got some support. So go for it. And um, I think that's all for this week. Thanks for listening, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye now. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.